This is the Renault Twizy, and I'm willing to bet you've seen it on the internet, but maybe haven't seen one of these things in real life. And that's because as of 2019, Renault have only sold around 30,000 examples of this car. But why is that? Why isn't it more popular? Is it a bit too weird to succeed? Are people missing out on an awesome electric city car? Is it still relevant in 2021? So what exactly is the Twizy? Well, it's actually a quadricycle and not a car. So technically, it's kind of classified as a four-wheeled bicycle, almost. It has an open wheel design, a bit like a Formula One car. So you can see a lot of the mechanisms that operate behind the wheels. They stick out. So you can see the dampers, the springs, the steering arm. Plus, it's got these really, really cute looking 13-inch alloy wheels behind which you'll find the dinkiest brake discs in the world. Apart from that, not a lot going on really. Um, it doesn't come with doors as standard, but this one has the optional scissor doors, which open vertically. You can get in and out on either side. It has a windscreen, wipers, indicators, mirrors, and just behind here is where you find the built-in three-pin socket, or plug rather, for charging the car, plus a bottle for your washer fluid. Apart from that, it's just a very simple, very minimalist, very stylish looking quadricycle. Inside the Twizy, it's all very minimalist really. You get a little bit of netting for storing things. I guess you can call that your glove compartment. You get a nice looking dashboard with a bit of carbon fiber effect paneling just up here. And there's a little storage compartment just up here for keeping your valuables. But apart from that, no creature comforts to speak of. No radio, no sat nav, no rear view mirror, if you can call that a luxury, no heating. There is, in this car, an optional Parrot Bluetooth module, which is designed to let you make hands-free calls, but I think most people are probably gonna end up using the speakerphone on their mobiles. As for the seats, actually, I think they're pretty cool. They look a bit like seats from a racing car. And this car is actually a two-seater. You can get a passenger just behind you sitting tandem. It's a little bit weird because when you drive like that, you feel a bit like you're either spooning or being spooned. So this car is designed for people who know each other very well or want to get to know each other very well. Bit of trivia for you. The name Twizy comes from twin, as in twin seater, and easy, as in easy to feel freaked out by someone sitting that close to you. As for storage, well, just behind you on that backrest, there's a removable panel which has 31 litres of storage space and that's designed to accommodate, apparently, a briefcase. Although, can you imagine the type of person who carries a briefcase driving around in a Twizy? Can't see it myself. Before we go and drive this car, quick reminder, every single month Auto Trader are giving away an electric car for free. Last month it was a Tesla Model 3. This month we're giving away a Renault Twizy. That's right, this car could be yours. Hit the link down below and the details are all there. Right, let's go for a drive. So, what is the Renault Twizy like to drive? I tell you what, it is exactly like a McLaren F1. Okay, that is a bit, a bit of an exaggeration, but it does have the same centrally mounted driving position. You're sat right in the middle of the car, so you get a great view all around you. I can even see, through a couple of glass panels in the floor, the edges of the wheels, so this car is incredibly easy to place on the road, it really is. It's probably easier to drive than the McLaren F1 as well, because all you gotta do is press D or R for drive or reverse, or press both at once to go into neutral, press the accelerator, give it a good stab, and then you're moving, and that is pretty much it. This car does not have power steering, so turning the wheel at a standstill or at very low speeds is a bit more difficult than it is in a car with power steering, obviously. But because the wheels and tires are so narrow that once you're on the move, it's just super easy to turn the wheel. In terms of acceleration, oh, big corner here. <laughs> this car has a 0 to 60 time of never. That's because it does a top speed of 50 miles an hour. I'll keep my foot pinned to the floor right now and see what we get out of it. 44 miles an hour. 44, 40, um, okay, it's a slight hill. 44 uphill is the maximum you'll get, oh, 43. But this isn't a very fast car, let's put it that way.
Having said that, I'd say it's certainly nippy enough around town, pulling away from a standstill up to say 30 miles an hour. There's, there's enough grunt there for it not to be unsafe or feel a little bit like you're getting in people's way. But once you're up at speed, say 30 miles an hour onwards, overtaking, it's not going to be on your agenda, trust me. But how about drag races? How does the Twizy compare with other forms of electric mobility for outright speed? Well, this quadricycle isn't going to hold its own against proper electric cars, but maybe it can hang with other types of cycle. This is the Mate Bike Mate X, which coincidentally also has a 50 mile range. It also offers very little protection from the elements, but crucially, it has a 750 watt electric motor that gives it quite the turn of speed. Can the Twizy compete? That will be, that will be a no then. Is it comfortable? It's not smooth, but it's not annoying. Here's a more important question. Is it fun to drive? That's an easy one. Yes, 100%. Because this car isn't very fast at all, and you tend to keep your foot flat to the floor the whole time, because let's face it, 50 is not that quick. You end up finding yourself trying to carry as much speed as possible through the corners, and ultimately cornering maybe a bit quicker than you should in this car and it can actually cope with it it's actually a hoot right here comes a big left hander chuck it in it grips really nicely a little right hander to follow <laughs> good stuff most of the weight in this car is mounted really low down in the chassis so even though the twizzy is taller than it is wide or long and you'd think that it has a really high center of gravity because it's got so much weight low down, it never feels like it's going to topple over. It's actually very, very engaging to drive. I, I'm having fun. One big thing you do notice, though, is that it's actually quite chilly in here. This thing might be all right in the south of France or in Spain or something, but actually, because it's got no windows, I find that quite a lot of wind gets swept into the cabin, especially on my ears. My ears are actually a little bit cold right now. But there's an easy solution to that. Just wear a scarf or one of those hats with the dangly things around your ears. What happens when it rains? You're gonna get wet. It's as simple as that. But that's no big deal for the Twizzy because it's actually waterproof. You can actually even hose this thing down or park it outside with the windows open, the doors open, and it'll get soaked but not damaged. Very cool. Just make sure that you wear something waterproof whenever you go out for a drive. When the Twizy was launched originally, it cost around seven and a half thousand pounds, and that bought you the Twizy, but not the battery pack. The battery had to be leased for 49 pounds a month under a 6,000 mile, 36 month deal. But ever since 2020, Renault has completely changed that. So now when you buy your Twizy, you get to buy the battery with it. Obviously, that affects the price. The entry-level Twizy now costs 12,000 pounds. This one, with the doors, costs 13,000 pounds. So even though it is the cheapest electric car on the market, it's not cheap. One big potential problem with the Twizy is the range. It has a 6.1 kilowatt hour battery pack, and Renault say that officially it will go between 31 and 56 miles but I fully charged this car last night and before I set off, it was only registering around 20-ish miles on the gauge. Now, realistically, oh, I'm overtaking a lorry here. Look at that, you can overtake. <laughs> For most people, I think between 20 and 30 miles is gonna be absolutely fine in this car because why would you wanna drive long distances in a Twizy? Oh no, ah, someone else has got his own back on me. <laughs> It's well suited for short trips to the shops maybe, or the school run, and just generally putting around your own neighborhood. As for charging, well I don't think you're gonna be treating the Twizy like you would treat an ordinary electric car. This isn't something that you're gonna to be topping up away from home, because the Twizy only comes with a three pin plug. And that means that you can't plug it into a rapid charger like you would pretty much every other electric car out there. You can only really plug it into a household plug and it takes around three and a half hours to charge. 
which means that this is ultimately a car designed for very short trips around your local area. And that's where the Twizy excels. It's a brilliant little city car. It's ideal for those short hop trips, hopping to the shops, doing the school run, and generally having a good time while you do those things. Yeah, you could argue that it's only ultimately as convenient as a bicycle or a scooter, but I think it's more versatile than those, and it also looks cooler. If you're after a really funky looking, fun to drive, entertaining little car, and you don't mind having cold ears, and you don't mind the price, get yourself a Renault Twizy. On the road now, for a little drivey drive. <laughs>